Hi folks, Dave here. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about circuit breakers used for solar power installations. This video is targeted at DIY solar power enthusiasts. It's not necessarily targeted at those who are professional installers. This is going to put everything in layman's terms as much as possible. The question in today's video is, why are DC and AC circuit breakers different? Are they interchangeable? And should I only use DC breakers for DC? Here I'm going to answer those questions. The short answer is that you should use an AC breaker for AC. As you can see, this circuit breaker is an AC breaker. Now I have seen breakers like this on certain online auction sites for sale as DC solar circuit breakers. Well, this is an AC breaker, as you can see by that little line right there, which indicates AC. This is a DC breaker, and that can be recognized by this little symbol here, which is a solid line on top of a dotted line. So why does it matter and why is it important to use a DC breaker for solar power installations? For example, if you have some solar panels and they're putting out about 50 volts DC into your charge controller, why not just use an AC breaker? Same thing, right? Wrong. It's not the same thing. These breakers, although you can't see inside of them, are built differently and have different purposes in mind. In order to understand why DC and AC require different circuit breaker solutions, let's try drawing it on paper. Let's start by just assuming that we're working with 48 volts AC and 48 volts DC. So let's write down 48 volts AC and let's do 48 volts DC. As I've said often on this channel, the two are different. They behave differently and they have different requirements. So let's go ahead and let's draw 48 volts AC on paper. And you do that, and I'm sure you saw this coming, by simply writing a sine wave. So I'm just going to approximate a sine wave. I don't say my drawing is really the best here, but it'll do. This is what a, well, this is roughly what a sine wave looks like. AC alternates between positive and negative. And it does this usually 60 times a second. In some places it's 50 times per second. But the reality is that this voltage is going back and forth between positive and negative. There's technically no polarity. You could say that this is positive and this is negative. It's going back and forth, but really AC doesn't have a polarity. It doesn't matter which side you hook up to. It's going to go back and forth. You get the same result. But DC is represented by a straight line. So that's DC. It doesn't go back and forth. It just keeps going. And you will have your, your positive and your negative. And that won't change. It's always going to be the same way. It doesn't go back and forth. Now you can see already that if you were to take DC and AC and compare them at least on, say, an oscilloscope or plot them as a waveform, they are absolutely very different. And as a result, they behave differently. Now to further aid understanding AC, I'm going to plot a line here, right through the middle. And again, my drawing is not perfect. I'm not a human printer or a plotter, but pretty much this is what a sine wave would look like. And you have this line going through the middle. What does that line represent? Well, that line represents zero volts, okay? So zero volts means that when you start out here, let's just assume this is the positive side, because if I were looking at this from a DC perspective, I would say, well, here's positive. Now it's going down, here's negative because of polarity swapping back and forth. And I'm not saying that's the correct way to look at it. I'm just explaining the concept and trying to help you understand why AC and DC are different. This is certainly not DC, but if you wanted to know about the polarity, well, it's swapping back and forth. That's how AC works. However, in order to go from positive to negative, what happens? The answer is the voltage starts to fall, and when it reaches this line here, that's zero volts. So you could maybe call this line the zero volt line. That's one way to look at it. I'm sure there's other ways, but that's how I look at it. But down here we have DC, and as you can see, it doesn't do that. It's just always the same. It's just a steady current, it's a steady voltage, and it doesn't alternate. You can see that these do require consideration, and of course a circuit breaker made to interrupt this is not necessarily going to be the same as a circuit breaker made to interrupt this. That should be obvious at this point, but I'm going to further explain. Now a DC circuit breaker has a specific layout inside. It's very complicated, and one of the things that it's supposed to do is interrupt arcs. So DC arcs and it behaves differently when arcing than AC does. AC, of course, it can arc too. But why do they behave so different? Why is it so important to make sure you have a DC breaker that can interrupt a DC arc? Well, I'm going to explain that. I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible. DC, since it does not vary and it does not interrupt and it does not change polarity, it just wants to keep going. That's the best way to explain it. If you have a switch, let's just say that you have a switch, and we'll represent that by a line which represents an electrical wire, and then we have 
our little contact here. DC just wants to keep going and going and going, and if you open the switch here, it's like it's got momentum. Imagine having water going through a pipe and suddenly you stop the pipe. All that water comes crashing into the valve and slams into it. It's got momentum. So DC wants to jump over the switch and keep going. That's the way it acts. That's what it does. Now the question is, what makes DC so much more likely to arc and damage a switch or bypass a circuit breaker than AC? The answer is right here. The zero volt line. The reason why DC is so much more likely to cause an arc and to jump over a gap like this is simply because it doesn't stop. Whereas AC is actually rising and then falling to zero volts, and then it goes down to the other polarity, and then it goes back to zero volts, and it's doing this 60 times per second. You could argue that there are 60 opportunities per second to break an arc, and or it could be 50 times. If it's 50 or 60 hertz, it depends on what kind of AC you're working with, but clearly, at some point, this AC is going to be at zero volts. That's going to help interrupt the arc. And because of this zero volts here, that means that AC, it does arc, but it doesn't behave the same as DC. DC doesn't alternate, and so when you open a gap like this, it's going to want to keep going. And because of that, you have to have a way to suppress and extinguish any DC arcs that take place. Therefore, DC circuit breakers absolutely have various means inside, including a magnetic part, to extinguish and redirect the arc and hopefully shut it off before it causes any damage. Now in reality, a circuit breaker like this is only rated to maybe hundreds of cycles or thousands of cycles. And that's because even with all the safety measures inside this breaker, eventually it's going to wear out. It's not going to be safe to use anymore. Sometimes I like to try to understand electricity as water in a pipe. Now I know this is not necessarily technically correct, but if you think of a water pipe that has, let's say, a certain amount of water pressure in it, and it's just traveling this direction, as soon as you turn off the faucet, there's like a momentum. It's called, uh, sometimes it's called a water hammer, and all that water slams into the valve, and it causes the entire line of, the entire pipeline to reverberate. And that's kind of like DC. It wants to keep going, and if you try to shut it off, it tries to keep going. And it jumps through the air sometimes and creates an arc. And depending on how high the voltage is, the higher the voltage, the higher the pressure. It becomes quite difficult to stop that from happening. And of course, any arc is going to partially destroy the switch over time because that arc is going to melt the metal and it's going to fly out in little pieces. They look like sparks. And that's why it's so important to wear safety glasses anytime you're around sparks, whether they are DC or AC, because those sparks can have molten liquefied metal in them and they might get in your eye or your face. AC, on the other hand, is giving you all these opportunities to stop. So if you open an AC switch, yeah, it can spark, it can arc, However, it's usually not as bad because you have all these zero points right here. These are all zero points right here. And this is a, a moment in time where the voltage is actually at zero. So imagine if you open the switch here at the right moment. Let's say this 48 volt DC was turning on and off once in a while. Let's say you waited for it to turn off and you quickly open the switch. What's going to happen? Well, nothing. Nothing's going to happen because there's no voltage. There's no pressure. And AC is kind of like that. It's giving you all these opportunities to interrupt at zero volts. However, it doesn't really work like that in actual practice. It's just a, it's food for thought. The fact that this is sometimes at zero volts means that it's easier to extinguish any arc that might occur across a gap. Question, can you use an AC breaker for DC? No, you should never do that. However, there are people who argue that you can use a DC breaker for AC. I don't agree with that and I wouldn't do it. But in theory, a DC breaker should be okay for AC but as I said, I don't recommend that. This is a DC breaker, and I would use it only for DC, and that's it. Of course, they have AC breakers. You can certainly, in an emergency, perhaps swap the two, but you should never, ever, ever use an AC breaker for DC, period, end of story. It's just not safe. It's not designed for interrupting DC. It's not designed the same. If you want to learn more, check out my video called DC Solar Circuit Breakers in 5 Minutes. To support this channel, please consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.